Hey guys, this is Andrea. Welcome back to the channel. So if you're new here, I am Andrea and I talk about the NDIS and disability topics from a lived experience from a Aussie perspective. I do live in Australia and I want to dive in today. Today I'm going to be talking about some broader terms and jargon around that when I've been scripting out some videos have really struck a chord with me and I just want to break them down. So one being vulnerable adult. So when I was doing a video talking about where and how to complain, I came across the term vulnerable adult. And this is a term that's being used more and more and more. And it's not a replacement for person-centered language, so disabled or person with a disability or something like that, a vulnerable adult is defined as someone who is vulnerable to abuse, neglect or exploitation from people who provide services to them. So that is children, that is disabled adults, that is people who are receiving an aged care package or in aged care facilities that are at risk of systemic or provider abuse, neglect or exploitation. Um, so there are certain sections of our community, so healthcare providers, so doctors, nurses, pharmacists, childcare providers who are what they're called mandatory reporters. So if they suspect abuse, neglect or harm, they are obliged to report that to appropriate services or escalate it as well. So that's why it's really important to speak up because there is a process that they need to follow as well. And it's not, as I said, it's not a replacement for the word disabled or other person-centered language, but it is a term to just remember that it is something that is not offensive, it is an adjective. And this ties into something that I was reading and really struck a chord with me in disability settings. They were saying that it means that these adults don't lack competency, it is the system that puts them at risk. And so this is what I wanted to touch on. The system for NDIS is supposed to be person-centred. But we do have a lot of providers who are not respecting that. They are stuck in the medical model or overcharging, price gouging, um, turning away people that don't have an NDIS package that would be paying out of pack pocket and claiming it back. Um, so being aware of the vulnerable adults that are in your life and I'm sure we all have them. So that might be an aunt, an uncle, grandma, grandpa, oma, mima, whatever you call your grandparents, aunts, uncles. Um, just really important to, especially coming up to the holidays, to check in on them. And on the tail end of people with a disability day, it is really important because a lot of service providers will trump out the good news stories and use them as self-promotion and how well we're doing. But after that day is over, there is a dip and things go back to normal. And so if someone is constantly tired, constantly hungry, looks unkempt, if that's not their usual appearance, you have to start to question what's going on. And that's where the term vulnerable adult comes in. And it's not a euphemism for the word disabled, autistic, ADHD, um, and or high functioning. And these are all in Australia reclaimed terms. I will do a video on reclaimed terms as well, guys. But vulnerable adult is one of those sticky terms that means different things to different people. And um, being vulnerable is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, you, as they said, the person or individual does not essentially lack competency. 
It's just that their disability might put them at a higher risk. And especially people with what Australia classifies psycho as psychosocial disabilities. So things like intellectual disabilities, ADHD, autism, um, or brain damage, or when epilepsy is that severe, it becomes a disability. And I'm aware that ADHD isn't on the NDIS. I know that there are some advocates trying to get on the NDIS for it, but this is where it comes back to, is it reasonable and necessary? Because ADHD being classified as medical conditions means it can be treated by the health system. And I am aware that the public health system is very overstretched as well, but there are policies, procedures and systems that you can put in place for ADHD. There is medication, there is biofeedback, there is ADHD coaching, and there are some support workers who will work with people who don't have NDIS, but to coach them with those strategies and do what is called scaffolding. So scaffolding is putting routines, procedures, policies in place for that person to be able to live a normal life because people with ADHD brains are fundamentally different as well. And this is where medication can help. But again, not a doctor, please check with your medical team as well. So it is a really tricky one to have a look at. But in saying that, the NDIS is moving towards more how you function from day to day and how you need assistance with everyday living activities or activities of daily living. And activities of daily living, the ADHD might be so severe and comorbid with another disability that is covered, such as autism, so that's when it would be covered. In my case, I have epilepsy, ADHD and the brain damage, so you can see where the ADHD is covered and it's all about the wording and you do have to be persistent and follow up one of my service providers followed up i followed up with today and they have a callback service they have email they have live chat um this goes back into the record keeping keep a screenshot of the live chat keep a record of the phone call they notified me out of that it would be recorded as well and that's the thing that is your choice and control. You, and that's what I'm saying about that the adult does not necessarily lack competency. They are more at risk to abuse, neglect and exploitation through practices that are outdated essentially, that have not caught up with the medical science or that the provider can't get enough staff to be giving good quality of care. And that's a decision that you need to make if you're an adult. Are you able to look after yourself? Do you need 24 seven care? Um, how are you able to advocate for yourself? If you have a support worker that does not know you or is rude to you or even abusive in that situation. Um, so that's where the term vulnerable adult comes into play because it comes across those three age barriers of child, vulnerable adults with a disability and those who are aged or elderly or have a, even have a chronic illness. There are some times when people with a chronic illness will need help from family and friends and those family and friends might suggest to be a paid care caregiver and that's where it gets very tricky as well because you can employ people that you know as of like friends as a support worker i will check the laws and get back to you if i need to do a correction video on that one but i see that that is the quickest way to destroy the friendship as well that is where your support workers come in but there is always a role for your informal supports and it's a bit tricky 
with the carer's allowance. So that one is where the vulnerable adult term comes in because that person might push you into bad financial decisions or see that essentially as a job or an excuse for not looking for a job because you have care they have care responsibilities sometimes in the case of a parent even if the child has an NDIS package this is reasonable and necessary for them because that is that parent's responsibility to care for that child. So you can see where vulnerable adults is a very nebulous term, but it's a term that I just wanted to unpack a bit more, given that I've started to dive into a lot more NDIS topics, guys. And please like, share and subscribe. And coming soon, I will be putting up some more Shadowhunters topics on the blog. I see that you guys seem to love that as well. We'll be taking a break over Christmas but I've got some pre-recorded content as well. Thanks, see you in the next video.